But yeah, last but not least, uh, Paul Guy, it's a well-known author uh, on uh, renewable energies and wind technologies, and very long experience in the sector. And what we, he will talk today about, it's something that I hope will also spice up the discussion a bit, because it's all these uh, many ideas that you will find on, especially on social media, about produce, like, well, I, would, I don't want to, to spoil it too much. I will just leave the floor to, to Paul. Paul, I can see the, the screen. We cannot see you yet. Ah, perfect. The first slide. <laughs> move, move this whole one up. Yeah. Okay, ne yeah. next, oh. next slide, Daniel. Next slide. Just a second. There. Okay. <laughs> that's, on, that's, only for, that's only for all the lawyers here in the United States. So the topic <laughs> is scam frauds and flakes. And uh, next slide. Yes. And it's not just the turbines that we're talking about. It's also their application, whether, for example, they're installed on buildings or not. You know, Daniel, are you going to be able to go to the next one? <laughs> and typically we're talking about dots, vots, squirrels in a cage. And the applications are urban, rooftop and building integrated and beware of an unholy mix of both of those. Next. Uh, the telltale signs are it's um, is a um, wind turbine that's heavy on hype and weak on experience has a fancy website and no actual photographs of the wind turbines because websites are much cheaper than building real wind turbines aggressive marketing and a tip for those would be to watch for multi-level pyramid schemes we call them here in the united states get in on the ground floor now and you too can be rich new designs that are not like those other wind turbines these are often vaults, ducted wind turbines, or caged squirrels. Next. Another telltale signs are patents. Remember, patents rarely mean anything in the field of wind energy. Another is works at low speeds. There's little power in this wind at low speeds, so why bother? And they're silent. Well, of course they're silent because they never work. Doesn't kill birds. And that's the most disreputable claim of most small wind turbines most scam frauds and flakes is that they don't kill wind uh, don't kill birds next so these are the lessons that we've learned from 40 years of working with small and medium wind next there are no panaceas there are no cheap solutions there are no breakthroughs and no miracles numbers, numbers matter. matter experience matters and size matters. Are you getting an echo? Next slide. It's resolved. Thank you. Lessons learned. Be wary of new designs. Next. Got me. I really don't know how this thing works. Next. No. Whatever you do, don't do this. This is absolutely a very, very bad idea. Next. Um, often these scam frauds and flakes are use ventilators and squirrels in a cage, so just forget it. Often these things will be tied off or braked, as you see in the illustration here. They've stuck pieces of wood into the turbine so it won't turn next. Often we see dots or diffuser augmented wind turbines. We've been there, done that. Next. These DOS reducted wind turbines, uh, you still see them around. Uh, about 10 years ago, there was quite a flurry of them in Europe. Uh, but the biggest thing up until recently was the 1997 to 2001 development of Vortec uh, in New Zealand. Next slide. But DOTs or di diffuser augmented wind turbines, ducted wind turbines really are as old as the hills. They're just as questionable now as they were then. This is a picture of the 1927 Dew Oliver's wind turbine. And Dew went to prison for this. Next. So lesson learned from Vortec. This is the deducted wind turbine that was, was developed in New Zealand, only one of which was built. Always check the numbers. The numbers didn't add up. Always check the references. The references for the Vortec were discredited in the USA. Always Google. Ducted wind turbine critics are on the internet, including myself, and always go to the library. There are lots of books on wind energy available today. Next slide. Politicians, unfortunately, love dots and vots. Anything to avoid serious decisions. 
For example, Denis Bopin, he's a maire adjoint of the Parti Vert, the Green Party, said, Nous ne souhaitons pas de tirer son paysage. We don't wish to spoil this Paris landscape with real wind turbines, so we'll use something else. Next. Ducted wind turbines are wind energy's curse. Probably the best example of that is Elena. It was the top dog of hype. Next. Mon Dieu, Elena was doubling down on the ducted wind turbine hype. Double diffusers, double rotors, contra-rotating, and as a result, they got two to four times the bet's limit. Ten times what a real wind turbine could do. Next. The Maison de l'Air, is this an April Fool's joke? I was here in April and I saw these wind turbines and the representative from the Ajouan de Marie was present to talk about the wonders of these wind turbines installed on the Maison de l'Air. Next. The diffuser augmented wind turbine Elena was uh, two to four times the bet's limit. Next far exceeded any of the other, whoops, yeah, thank you very much, uh, far exceeded the outlandish limits or outlandish claims of other Vought wind turbines, including wind tamer. Next slide. Another example of a ducted wind turbine scam is the Honeywell Windtronics. Next. Typical when we find these uh, wind turbine scams, they create straw men so that they can knock them down. For example, Windtronic said it does not have a gearbox. Well, as we know, most small wind turbines don't have a gearbox. They directly drive, the, the rotor directly drives the generator. Next. Another straw man, easy to knock down, is that it will start in a very, very low wind. Of course, there is no energy in the wind, so who cares if the wind turbine turns at two miles per hour? If you want a kinetic sculpture, buy a whirly gig. Next. Um, Honeywell Windtronics also makes claims to big endorsements. Always be questionable of big endorsements. Honeywell is a famous name here in the United States as a manufacturer of electronic products. But if you read the fine print of the Honeywell Windtronics wind turbine, it says Honeywell has nothing to do with this. We are just using their name. Next. And of course, a lot of times you'll find that the estimated energy generation by these wind turbines is outlandish, doesn't make any sense. It's hard to understand what they're actually referring to. In this case, it may be that they're referring to constant wind as opposed to average wind speed. Next slide. And beware when they say this wind turbine has been certified. Well, the Honeywell Windtronics wind turbine, there was no testing. There was no certification, but there was misleading statements that it had been certified by UL or the Canadian Standards Association. They only certify the electrical components of the wind turbine, not that the wind turbine works as a wind turbine. Next slide. Honeywell Windtronics had never applied to be certified by the Small Wind Certification Council, and the Honeywell Windtronics wind turbine is not listed as a certified wind turbine. The wind turbine was not certified. Next. And the Honeywell wind turbine, uh, Honeywell Windtronics wind turbine is unbelievable. It hoodwinked the state of Michigan. It hoodwinked the province of Ontario for almost $3 million. It hoodwinked Ace Hardware, which is a nationwide uh, network of hardware stores here in the United States. And if you need one, there are plenty available. Next slide. Shear wind Envelox is another example of a ducted uh, wind turbine. Um, they sold one to the Nature Conservancy because they told them it doesn't kill birds. Well, once again, it doesn't kill birds because it never worked. They also sold uh, three of these to the Michigan National Guard. And this was not a very good idea at all because, as you know, here in the United States, we have lots of guns and the Michigan National Guard has lots of guns and they know how to use them. 
and it was installed in Denmark where they called it a chimney as opposed to a wind turbine. Once again, their estimates of what the energy would be produced by these is probably based on constant wind, not average wind speed, though it's very hard to tell. Next. And so zombie wind, are dots dead? Will they rise again from the grave? Well, let's take the Honeywell Windtronics. We thought that wind turbine was dead and put in its grave until TAM Energy came along. TAM Energy, developed and owned by Donald Trump Jr. Yes, that Donald Trump Jr. and his dad had to bail him out from bankruptcy. Flow Design and Ogen, is this turbine really dead or will it to rise up from the grave? Next. So Flow Design and Ogen, they milked money from the big boys. These were not small time operators. These were big time operators. Kleiner Perkins, venture capitalist, funded this, backed this, as did Al Gore. You may, may remember him. He was the vice president of the United States. ARPA, which is the Department of Energy. MIT, I could list many others who endorsed this technology development. Alberta, that's a province in, this, in the country of Canada, and New Zealand pension funds invested as, almost as much as $300 million uh, in this wind turbine development. Ten times that invested in Vortec 20 years earlier that ended in failure. Is this the walking dead? Next. So uh, Flow Design and Ogen installed a group of these wind turbines in near Palm Springs. And once again, we hope to drive a stake through the heart of this technology because it continues to milk people for money. These turbines all failed and were eventually removed for scrap. Next. So Vots and Dots have traditionally been magnets for hustlers and charlatans. And the best example here is the pyramidal power of MagWind that was endorsed by TV personalities here in North America, Jay Leno and Ed Begley, but also endorsed by the Globe and Mail. That's the newspaper of record in Canada calling the inventor of this wind turbine the next Alexander Graham Bell. They too predicted that there was more energy uh, from this wind turbine than in the wind itself. They not only were thinking out of the box, they were thinking it on another planet entirely. Next. But they finally caught up with MagWind's Jim Rohn. They captured him in Saskatoon in 2017, and now he's serving time in prison here in the United States where he belongs. Next slide. So Vaults and Dots, we've been there, done that. Next. Vots, of course, are omnidirectional. That's one of the reasons why people say we should be using it. But so are vots. So are hots. Horizontal axis wind turbines orient themselves with the wind. Next slide. So cleaning up after clean field, this turbine was developed in early 2000s as a student project. They did number of wind tunnel tests, but they only measured volts. They never measured amps. Next. So by 2017, almost seven years later, they still had no testing. But in 2009, it was declared a success by the Ontario Center of Excellence. And this was a place, a dumping ground for Tory politicians of Canada's political system. After a decade, they still had no results that they could report. In 2013, they finally defaulted on all their loans. Next. Typically, we see that in vaults, and if we compare them with the horizontal axis of wind turbines, they have very poor, a very poor comparison. Next. Horizontal axis wind turbines are two times as efficient, twice as efficient as a typical vertical axis wind turbine, and they have one quarter of the specific mass. And a big advantage, an essential advantage from all wind turbines is horizontal axis wind turbines are self-regulating and most vertical axis wind turbines are not. You can't have a wind turbine that's not self-regulating. Next slide. Many people have developed vertical axis wind turbines, including Mike Berge, who's on this call today. Next. But most people don't build vertical axis wind turbines today, including Mike Berge, 
He hasn't built one since then. The people who don't build wind turbines a day is like a who's who of the wind energy industry. Next. So vertical axis wind turbines typically have less power. They're not self-regulating. They have much higher mass. They are much more expensive. And so in the end, why bother? Next. The most successful vertical axis wind turbine history was flow wind. At one time, it was producing over 100 million kilowatt hours per year, the wind turbine, the flow wind turbines, the Darius egg beater turbines here in California. But that ended in 2004. And not since then has any vertical axis wind turbine generated an appreciable amount of electricity. Next. And Monsieur Darius himself, when he patented his uh, Darius wind turbine, he patented all different configurations. So there are no new configurations for the Darius wind turbines under the sun today. Next. When he filed his patent in 1926, in 1927, he built an eight meter diameter wind turbine, but it was a horizontal axis wind turbine, conventional wind turbine of two blades. In 1929, he developed a 20 meter diameter horizontal axis wind turbine. In 1930, he built a 10 meter diameter horizontal axis wind turbine. And in 1944, he finally, for the first time, built a vertical axis wind turbine for testing in a wind tunnel only, wind tunnel model. Monsieur Darius himself never built a vertical axis wind turbine. Next. Another example of, of uh, wind of scams, frauds, and flakes is the idea of putting wind turbines on top of buildings. Next. Next. Yes, thank you. So why bother with the rooftop wind? In the early days, we thought, well, it's where the people live, urban areas. Solar PV was expensive. A uh, wind then was cheaper than PV, but today that's not the case. Solar is much cheaper than wind. And tall buildings, who needs a tower if you have a tall building? Wrong on most accounts. Next. Rooftop wind turbines cause turbulence. The wind turbines are poor performers. They have noise and vibration. Uh, there's a question of safety. It's simply a bad idea. Next. Duh. Did they get this wrong? This is not going to work. This is a school. This Darius wind turbine was installed on a school, fortunately during the summer recess. And by the time the students had returned to class, the turbine had already been removed. Next slide. So rooftop mounting. Typically, if you see rooftop mounting, you will find either the wind turbine is not turning or in fact it is tied off so it physically cannot turn as you see here next slide uh, this was a big spread for an aggressive marketing of a ducted uh, wind turbine for rooftop mounting next slide and as you see here in the anemometer is spinning all the wind turbines were tied off so even on the cover of this architectural magazine the wind turbines were tied off as an example of what not to do next this is another example I came across in my own travels. Once again, the wind turbine is tied off because the people who work in this building refuse to listen to the noise. Next. So building an integrated rooftop wind turbines, NREL issued a report. So my conclusion would be that rooftop wind turbines were a failure. But if you read the report, you'd say, huh, experience, mixed results, really? Hmm. Well, then you have to delve into the report in detail to find out that NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory here in the United States, defines success as meeting their public relations objectives. Well, if that's your definition of success, many things can be considered success. But if it's $30,000 per kilowatt and it's 10, 100 times the cost of a conventional wind turbine when you look at the energy production, and this is the only example, the example that you see here at the bottom of the screen, the only example that NREL found where the wind turbines operated reliably. Next slide. So urban wind, what is it? Well, it's rooftop wind turbines or building integrated wind turbines as you see here. I call it architectural greenwashing. And a good example of this is Indianapolis, Indiana. Next. So greenwashing, what is it? It's make-believe wind. It's fake. It's deceptive. It's a sham. It's phony. 
Uh, it's its public relations value exceeds its energy generation as defined by NREL. It's a kinetic sculpture. And sometimes it's not even that because the wind turbines don't work. Often it's not like those other wind turbines. Next. So here's Indianapolis. This is uh, using the Mariah wind turbines at a installation in downtown Indianapolis. These are possibly not even kinetic sculptures. I doubt that those turbines turn today or are even standing today. Next. And particularly galling was the Indiana Nature Conservancy, which called this installation of three Savonius rotors in front of its building the crown jewel of their conservation and renewable energy efforts. Might not generate 8,000 kilowatt hours per year. Now that they got that right. Next. So is this the worst turbine install in history? And if you don't know why, you're in the wrong business. Next. Urban Green Energy is probably the most um, egregious, vying for top spot and scam frauds and flakes for their vertical axis wind turbine. Next. They put two of those things inside the Eiffel Tower. You may have read about it. Gustav Eiffel is still turning in his grave to this day. Next. Real urban wind is using real turbines on real towers, producing real electricity, and they are compatible with most existing land uses. They are the Eiffel's Tower of today. This is the Cleveland Science Center, but of course in Europe you can see these all over, and particularly around the Focus Center uh, in Denmark. Next slide. So small wind today, performance matters, reliability matters, service matters, and this is all to make profitability important. Next. Small wind turbines today we have testing and certification. These testing societies weed out the crap, the scams, the frauds, and the flakes. Small wind turbines are more productive today because we have high performance generators. They're more durable. They have more swept area, which is the important parameter, and it's not kilowatts, it's swept area, and are more profitable. Next. Improved performance. Uh, in the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen substantial improvements in performance. Next. Small wind turbines today are 50% better performance, they have 50% higher performance than they had 15 to 20 years ago. Next slide. So if you want to learn more about small wind turbines and how to, how to avoid scam, frauds, and flakes, you can visit my website. I have a section on small wind turbines. Next where I talk about ducted wind turbines, and I give several examples of some scams, frauds, and flakes. Also some examples of scam, frauds, and flakes of rooftop and urban wind. And I talk about testing of small wind turbines and also vertical axis wind turbines, and I give you some examples there. So I'm open for questions. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Sorry for the problems, and um, I'll take your questions. Thank you. You could not see. Yeah. They were clapping when we were muted. So, thank you very much. So, questions. Let's see if uh, anyone does. Thank you. The reason why we we kindly ask Paul to join us is because there are really a lot of things happening. I said a lot on social media and sometimes it's just uh, you don't really know what to say because I mean as a, as a focus center we are open to everything as long as it works or as long as we are with the mindset that uh, yeah maybe this concept works in a certain condition and not in another and we are aware of that but we have got uh, some years ago also some uh, municipality representatives from uh, from Canada I think coming in here and asking, yeah, we have this idea, we got proposed this uh, investment, and will that work? And I can remember our our founder, uh, Preben Megas, saying, I don't know according to which laws of physics, 
So, <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit, uh, I can see their point of view, of course, from the municipality perspective, that was really a big hit because they say, okay, I've done this trip for, for saying, for hearing no, but on the other hand, that's really affecting the, the city's manufacturers. And then they say wind doesn't work. We have proofs all around that wind works. It's just, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, design is not the first criteria. Aesthetic design, at least. Uh, it's, it's, so there's no questions, compliments. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. No, I, it's Mike Berge. I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello, Paul, and uh, encourage everyone who's on social media to respond when you see something um, you know that's outrageous and you know a bunch of people saying i want to buy one and you know if it if it looks really wonky respond you know get your comments out there i know i know paul is burnt out and uh, michael bernard is burnt out and i'm burnt out you know, we've been we've been uh, commenting on the scams for decades now and we you know uh, you know i know occasionally uh, somebody gets so egregious that paul you know, comes out of retirement, wades in because he can't sleep at night unless he does. But um, if if uh, others would uh, join that crusade, I think it would help uh, balance the the bullshit that's out there on social media. So don't don't be afraid uh, to wade in and and let people know that that's there's really no there there. Yeah, thanks, Mike, and I I, I would have to second uh, with Mike that. Yes, it's time for the next generation uh, to take over from us. Uh, we are burnt out answering uh, the queries saying, does this thing work or is this a crazy idea? And um, while I do get drawn out of retirement periodically by something that's so egregious, I can't help but comment, I'd rather not really. Uh, one, I think the last time I posted something, I literally spit out my morning coffee. It was so bad. And that was the first it, article I read about you. So that was really what caught my attention. <laughs> and and, and quick, well, yeah, sure. quickly, and I think it's going to be really important as we go forwards because the market is really turning. And that means that, lot, I mean, we've seen this in the United States. And Mike, you can, or, or Paul, you can comment on this. Whenever there's strong incentives for distributed technology, the people come out of the woodwork and have technology to just meet the incentives. And, and so I expect that over the next two years, we're going to see a lot more shady companies coming out trying to capture the current kind of momentum that's in the marketplace. That's yes, right. It's absolutely. As soon as, as soon as there's more money, they, they come out of the woodwork. But from our side, we can say we are testing. So we are open to all kinds of ideas. <laughs> uh, no problem with that. But it's serious testing. So then, uh, then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. As simple as that. But let me add to that, Daniel, that it's extremely important because you do testing now. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory does testing too, but the reports become public. Mm -hmm. So people like me or Mike Berge or others can actually look at the report and read it and say, this does not work mm -hmm. uh, because they did the test. And so it's important for testing stations like the Focus Center to, to publish their results. Yeah. No, say, yeah, I think there is something with confidentiality there, but what we can say is this yeah. works yeah. at least. Yeah. And again, uh, now I, Tony I, comes. No, no, I also, I also discussed <laughs> it several times. With, hello, Paul. I also discussed it with Brent just recently because we have a lot of old reports. Some of them is written in confidentiality. Some are so old now we can do it. But if you can mention the name of Valve that didn't go to a, a, a duration test. It fell even before that, 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 that was teared apart uh, and are not counting in any kind of statistics because they failed. And, and, and end of story. <laughs> but sadly, when, we, when it comes to mentioning it now, yeah, maybe we should take some more of these into, uh, into the studies and say, OK, they all failed. They all failed and that was, was, that was teared apart. And what we should also consider developing is having a list on the page, a public list on who has tested here. Maybe the results, that's something that we cannot share, but at least who has tested. Because we found on internet some companies that were using our logo 
uh, to promote their product, basically. <laughs> they just cut off the letterhead and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, for, for someone that doesn't know, that's very difficult. So at least having a register of who has been here and then that's from there, then uh, it's a different discussion. But it's a work in progress, all of it, of course. It's, uh, it's very difficult to prosecute these people. Um, in my knowledge, there's only been one, I think there are now two people in the United States that have gone to prison for fraud with wind energy. One is the Jim uh, Rowan that I mentioned, and another was a, a, a fraud that I didn't follow, somebody else did. But also, that's also part of our role here with these conferences. Of course, we have the, the developers, the technical uh, people, the more into that knowledge people. But we have also, we can see a lot of students coming in and a lot of uh, people with no physical connection to wind energy. So by hearing all these presentations here, then they get an understanding on also what where is the industry going and what is true, what is not. So hopefully that, that will have an impact. I think it's important, and I maybe not emphasized it enough, is to to ask the appropriate questions. And and one of those questions is, if this is a new idea, why haven't other people done it before? And, and I'll give you the example that's current on the internet right now is there's an image of the sea with an array of vertical axis wind turbines, straight bladed Darius wind turbines, and, and people are sending to me, what do you think of this? And I'll say, I'll believe it when I see it. It's just an image and um, people need to ask the question, well, if this is going to be such a wonderful thing, why hasn't it been done already? There's reasons why it hasn't been done already. Yeah, I mean, the, the sector, both small and big wind, they, they, it's flooded of professionals. So, I mean, someone must have thought on it. And if not, well, as I said, testing is the key. You have an independent test and then, uh, you know, if it's good, if it's not good, if it needs to be improved. But just before I forget it, uh, we opened up a LinkedIn group some time ago that I put now in the chat. I will send it also to the, all the participants. And we are trying to group together all the small distributed medium wind people so that we could have a space where we can post and update each other on the latest things. So hopefully you will be interested in joining. We are not uh, posting anything specific. We are just putting when the conferences are, but it's anyone in the group can post things that might find relevant for the rest of the audience. Yeah, I, let me mention one thing real quickly. Uh, uh, Paul and I and, and Michael Bernard used to try to one up each other on finding the worst, most egregious claims. I, I think I found one that can retire the trophy. And I invite you to go visit AmericanWindInc.com. All one word, AmericanWindInc.com, which has a nine inch diameter rotor rated at one kilowatt <laughs> for those of you who are not you know can't do physics in your head all that quick the kinetic energy in the wind it would require 94 miles an hour to to reach one kilowatt at 100 percent efficiency so. <laughs> so the new golden egg <laughs> it, it's a it's a wonder well, they're planning to use that on Mars or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Air Force is interested. Um, oh. <laughs> just takes a. I mean, at the end, as long as you find someone that can buy it, so what's. Uh... <laughs> and the, 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 the... Actually, there are some people that are really strong in the marketing and promotion and so, which are actually overtaking people who are strong on the technical side, but maybe not so much in the marketing part. So that's also something to consider for the for the hardcore uh, people with uh, working products and so that uh, maybe you should hire those people for promoting your products as well. <laughs> One of the things I would I, uh, continue this dis discussion is that we as technical people do have a moral responsibility to point out that the emperor has no clothes. So if you are working for a company that has something like what Mike Berge just explained, 
you have a moral responsibility either to tell the executives of the company that it's fraudulent or you need to tell the public to, to beware of that company and leave your employment. Uh, that's the only choice that you have. Uh, you, as a technical person who's been trained, who studied physics, maybe an engineer, um, you have a responsibility to call these kinds of things out to protect other people, but also to protect the renewable energy industry, which we absolutely need more of um, today than ever before. And of course, um, yeah, well, that's enough. So any further comment, question from the audience? Big thank you for both. Good. So a uh, couple of more things from our side. Well, first of all, uh, again, thank you for uh, to, from to Berkey Wind Power to sponsor the event. That's uh, we would like to keep this event free as much as possible so that everyone can access, and that's a very big help that uh, it can uh, help. And uh, the next thing it's uh, we have decided on uh, on some dates for next conference so that you know it already. That will be in a year time, the 20 and 21st of September. That's uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I think. And uh, we would love to have more people in person because, uh, of course, now if if you all were here, we would just go dine together and continue a nice conversation. <laughs> so keep it in mind. Uh, there is some time available now. Uh, we we plan two days now. There might be a third one or we might shrink it to one, depends on how many options do we have in terms of presentations, but you are all, all already invited to that. And uh, it's also nearby the, the wind exhibition in Usum, as usual, so that if people come from abroad, then they can use the chance to, to also join that in a quick, in a yeah, short period, let's say. Pusum next year. Yeah, and then, the, and then of course, that includes an invitation also to the Task 41. That, uh, yeah, we, we, we are sorry we crashed a little bit with uh, your meetings. Some of you had to, to go out of the meeting or, yeah, could not join the conference, but everything is recorded. So if you miss something that you're interested on, somewhere next week, 10 days, you will get the videos and all the links. Uh, there is a question from uh, Mohamed. Yes, please. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, first, uh, thank you for this uh, important event. Uh, and second, uh, thank you for Dr. Bowell for this great presentation. Uh, I have one question uh, uh, from your experience. Uh, uh, what do you think about uh, benefits and the advantages uh, uh, about uh, wind to hydrogen? Uh, which mean green hydrogen uh, projects. Uh, and finally, thank you for all uh, <laughs> uh, professors and Egyptian engineers who are now in Polk Center. Yeah, I guess it's a question for you, Paul, right? Uh, well, I, <clears throat> in my last book, um, I argued that we should avoid an emphasis on hydrogen uh, but that uh, renewable energy can be used to produce hydrogen, but the hydrogen should be methanated, that is made into methane, CH4, because that's easier to transport and can be readily stored in the existing network, for example, that you have in Europe. Uh, Germany has a huge methane storage system as we have here in the United States. So my, my comments were, yes, renewable energy can be used to uh, electrolyze water, to break up uh, uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen, but the hydrogen should be used to methanate, should be methanated to produce methane because we can already use methane. Yeah, or also well, ammonia, ammonia as far as ammonia. Yeah. ammonia, it's also, especially for transport applications, yeah. that's, that's what they are looking at now. Okay, thank you. Anything more? Hmm. Then I would kindly ask you before we, we close this uh, two days that you, all of you that uh, wish to turn on the camera so that we can take a digital group picture and <laughs> then we will take one of the physical audience here as well. 
So if you can all open the camera, I go to the other computer to take the picture. Ken, are you in a classroom there? Is it... <laughs> you just have some fans. <laughs> no, I got a bunch of my students with me here, and I said, hey, you guys have an opportunity. We're going to Denmark. And they've been sitting here listening to everything. It's totally great. Good to see you again, Paul. Nice talk. And uh, I think your biggest point there was uh, show me the data. Bottom yeah. line. So I don't know if you want to go there. Can yeah. you appear in the picture as well? Okay. What's out the table? Yeah. So it should be as a maximum to the right side. Right? That's what the camera gets. No, let's uh, have a look. I've been there already. <laughs> Some of them you can come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I like your tie. I like your tie. Wait, there is, there is one more coming. Come on in the picture. Yes, come on. Yeah. Ah. There. I'm Camelia. Yeah. Ah, I think the camera must go. Tommy, you're not. Uh, no, we're. I did do it. Some of the others already left, but uh, <laughs> still not in. So, no, but you can come here. There is space for two here. Come uh here. -huh. Then you can then you can shadow the yeah, yeah. The, the light here. Good, Good, perfect. Smile. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gamal. Gamal. I, Gamal. Yeah, I like your tie. Good tie. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 We gotta get some of them. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining. For thank you for Mike for being up uh, so late as usual. Thank you for everyone from anywhere who you have to spend hours uh, instead of sleeping listening to us and to the students to, to join as well. So Come we. Back. Yeah, we hope that, uh, that uh, next year we can see each other again. And thanks to Paul also to show a picture of Mike uh, as a young person. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. It's Paddy Thank here. You. Yeah, good to see thanks, you, Paddy. Daniel. Much appreciated. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye to everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. 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 Bye.